financial and political terms. BAE originally sought to agree on a price with the ADS through an informal process. Due to lengthy negotiations and disagreements over price, BAE exercised its put option, which saw investment bank Rothschild appointed to give an independent valuation. In June 2006 Airbus was embroiled in significant international controversy over an announcement of further delays in the delivery of its A380. Following the announcement the value of associated stock plunged by up to 25% in a matter of days, although it soon recovered afterwards. Allegations of insider trading on the part of Noel Forged, CEO of EADS, its majority corporate parent, promptly followed. The loss of associated value was of grave concern to BAE, press described a furious row between BAE and EADS with BAE believing the announcement was designed to depress the value of its share. A French shareholder group filed a class action lawsuit against EADS for failing to inform investors of the financial implications of the A380 delays while airlines awaiting deliveries demanded compensation. As a result, EADS chief Noel Forged and Airbus CEO Gustav Humbert resigned on 2 July 2006. On the 2nd of July, 2006 Rothschild valued BAE's stake at £1.9 billion, 2.75 billion euros, well below the expectation of BAE, analysts, and even the ADS. On the 5th of July BAE appointed independent auditors to investigate how the value of its share of Airbus had fallen from the original estimates to the Rothschild valuation. However, in September, 2006 BAE agreed to the sale of its stake in Airbus to EADS for £1.87 billion, 2.75 billion euros, $3.53 billion, pending BAE's shareholder approval. On the 4th of October shareholders voted in favour of the sale, leaving Airbus entirely owned by EADS. On the 9th of October, 2006 Christian Streif, Humbert's successor, resigned due to differences with parent company EADS over the amount of independence he would be granted in implementing his reorganization plan for Airbus. He was succeeded by EADS co-CEO Louis Gallois, bringing Airbus under more direct control of its parent company. On the 28th of February, 2007, CEO Louis Gallois announced the company's restructuring plans. Entitled Power, the plan would see 10,000 jobs cut over four years, 4,300 in France, 3,700 in Germany, 1,600 in the UK and 400 in Spain. 5,000 of the 10,000 would be at subcontractors. Plants at St. Nazaire, Verrill and Lawfine face sell-off or closure, while Miot, Nordenhan and Filton are open to investors. As of the 16th of September, 2008 the Lawfine plant has been sold to a Thales Dial consortium to form Dial Aerospace and while the design activities at Filton have been retained, the manufacturing operations have been sold to British company GKN. The announcements resulted in Airbus unions in France and Germany threatening strike action. At the 2011 Paris Air Show, Airbus received total orders valued at about $72.2 billion for 730 aircraft, a new record in the civil aviation industry. The A320neo, new engine option, model, announced in December 2010 received 667 orders. This, together with previous orders, resulted in a total of 1,029 orders within six months of launch date, creating another industry record. In February 2008, the United States Air Force awarded a $35 billion contract for KC-45 aerial refueling tankers to Northrop Grumman with EADS as a major subcontractor. The contract, initially valued at $35 billion, 
would have seen Northrop Grumman and EADS would build a fleet of 179 planes based on the existing Airbus A330 to provide in-air refueling to military aircraft. Final assembly of the aircraft would take place at an Airbus plant near Mobile, Alabama. However the award was protested by Boeing, the other bidder on the project, which was upheld by the GAO. The competition was restarted and in March, 2010, Northrop Grumman announced it was withdrawing its bid, with its CEO stating that the revised tender requirement favored Boeing. On the 20th of April, 2010, EADS announced it was re-entering the competition and intended to enter a bid with the KC-45. EADS reported a 763 million euros loss for 2009 as a result of a 1.8 billion euros charge on the troubled Airbus A400M project and a 240 million euros charge related to the A380. In September 2012 it was reported that BAE and EADS were in merger discussions. In the event of a merger, BAE's shareholders would own 40% and EADS 60% of the resultant organization. EADS shareholder Lagarde asked EADS to rethink the proposed merger as the conditions were unsatisfactory. The bosses of BAE Systems and EADS issued a joint statement seeking political support for their proposed 35 billion euro, US dollar 45 billion, merger from the British, French and German governments, and reiterated that the combination is born out of opportunity, not necessity and the new company would be greater than the sum of its parts. On the 10th of October, 2012, the merger proposal was abandoned. 2014-2015, Airbus Group NV, edit. In January, 2014, EADS was reorganized as Airbus Group NV, with three divisions, Airbus, Airbus Defense and Space, and Airbus Helicopters. On the 27th of May, 2015 the company became a Societas Europea, SE, Latin, European company, having been a non nos venue chap, public limited company. In September, 2016, Airbus Group announced that it would merge with its largest division, Airbus SAS, into a new entity and introduce a single Airbus brand. The merge to take effect on the 1st of January, 2017. The group reorganized under the brand name of Airbus in January, 2017. The subsidiaries Airbus Helicopters and Airbus Defense and Space became operating divisions of the same company. Airbus Group SE changed its legal name to Airbus SE at its 2017 annual meeting on the 12th of April, 2017. 2015-2017, Airbus Group SE, edit. In 2015, Airbus Group said it was establishing an R&D center and venture capital fund in Silicon Valley. Airbus CEO Fabrice Brigia stated, what is the weakness of a big group like Airbus when we talk about innovation? We believe that we have better ideas than the rest of the world. We believe that we know because we control the technologies and platforms. The world has shown us in the car industry, the space industry and the high-tech industry that this is not true. And we need to be open to others' ideas and others' innovations. Airbus Group CEO Tom Enders stated that the only way to do it for big companies is really to create spaces outside of the main business where we allow and where we incentivize experimentation. That is what we have started to do but there is no manual. It is a little bit of trial and error. We all feel challenged by what the internet companies are doing. Six months after launch, the Airbus Group Venture Fund in Silicon Valley became fully operational in January, 2016. 
In January 2016, Airbus announced it has signed a tentative agreement with Iran to sell 118 Airbus aircraft along with a comprehensive civil aviation cooperation package as a part of the implementation of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JPOA. Boeing has also announced its will to sell 80 jets directly to Iran Air as part of a proposed deal worth up to $17.6 billion. However, in early July 2016, U.S. House of Representatives passed amendments that would block U.S. Department of Treasury funds from granting export licenses or re-port of passenger commercial aircraft. Boeing reacted that if its deal with Iran is blocked by the U.S. Congress, all other companies that supply to its rivals should be prohibited as well. Airbus, too has said that it requires US approval to export airliners to Iran, because parts of its aircraft are made in the US. The deal between Iran Air and Airbus was finally implemented, and the first new purchased Airbus aircraft, an A321, landed in Tehran's International Merabad Airport on 12 January 2017. Airbus stated that the delivery has been in full compliance with the JPOA and U.S. Government Office of Foreign Assets Control licenses. 2017 present, Airbus SE, edit. On 30 June, Airbus said its airliner sales team would now report directly to Tom Enders, Airbus chief executive, and bypass Fabrice Brigia, who will lead programs, support and services engineering, manufacturing, procurement and quality while Enders will lead sales and marketing. On the 16th of October, Airbus and Bombardier Aerospace announced a partnership on the C-Series program, with Airbus acquiring a 50.01% majority stake, to expand in an estimated market of more than 6,000 new 100 to 150 seat aircraft over 20 years. Airbus supply chain expertise should save production costs but headquarters and assembly remain in Quebec while U.S. customers would benefit from a second final assembly line in Mobile, Alabama. In the fall, Der Spiegel investigated systematic corruption and improper intermediates usage in past sales and questioned whether Enders can survive the scandal as he did not react quickly enough. Then Handelsblatt reported the French government wants to control Airbus again and Brigia wants to get Enders fired to gain his position. Sales chief John Lee was supposed to retire at the end of 2017 to be replaced by his deputy Kieran Rao. A few weeks before the switch, Rao told Airbus CEO Tom Enders that he was no longer available. After investigations into alleged bribery, Enders took personal responsibility for the sales organization compliance. Eric Schools, aerospace engineer and president of Rolls-Royce PLC Civil Aerospace, replaced Lee in January 2018. In November, Paul Romenko, Airbus's CTO, quit after two years. French unions held him responsible for the job cuts made at a French research facility nearby Paris. Tom Enders was counting on Paul Romenko to create a radically different approach to R&D. On 28 November 2017, Airbus announced a partnership with Rolls-Royce PLC and Siemens to develop the EFAN X hybrid electric aircraft demonstrator to fly in 2020. Ender's mandate as CEO ran until April 2019, but in December 2017 the Airbus board confirmed Ender's will not stay beyond April 2019 and announced that in February 2018 Brigia will be replaced by Guillaume Fiori, currently Airbus helicopter CEO. This should have been disclosed in early 2018. However the media hype accelerated the timing but not the decision. When told by the board that he would not succeed Enders as CEO, Brigia chose to leave. Besides Enders, Brigia, Lee and Irimenko, engineering chief Charles Champion is retiring at the end of 2017, 
Airbus North America Chairman Alan McCarter is leaving, as is the unit's CEO Barry Eccleston to be replaced by Jeff Nittel, CEO of Lessor CIT Aerospace. Head of Military Aircraft Fernando Alonso, Civil Aircraft Division Coup Tom Williams and Head of Programs Didier Evrard are also nearing retirement. For 2017, Airbus announced it received 1,109 net orders from 44 customers in 2017, and delivered 718 aircraft to 85 customers, 558 A320 family, including 181 A320neo, 67 A330s, 78 A350XWBs and 15 A380s. Following the UK decision to leave the EU, Airbus faced calls to move or reduce wing production from the UK. Currently produced in Broughton and designed in Filton since 1970, wing production employs 15,000 people, which is over 10% of Airbus staff. However Tom Enders promised the UK government that Airbus would retain its British operations long into the future and see the UK as a home country and a competitive place to invest. Airbus will designate a new CEO to succeed Enders by the end of 2018, which will be submitted to shareholders at the spring 2019 annual meeting with planer-making boss and former Eurocopter head Guillaume Fury as the main internal candidate. Airbus Chief Financial Officer Harold Wilhelm will quit when Enders will leave in 2019. On the 15th of May, in its EU appeal ruling, the WTO concluded that the A380 and A350 received improper subsidies through repayable loan chains or low interest rates which could have been avoided and Airbus agreed to correct those violations. On the 13th of September, Eric Schools left the chief commercial officer role for personal reasons and was replaced by Christian Schurer, CEO of ATR since October 2016. As Schools was previously head of Rolls-Royce PLC Civil Engines, currently suffering problems, airlines could have had a skewed opinion. On the 8th of October, the board of directors selected Guillaume Fiori to succeed Tom Enders as Airbus CEO from the 10th of April 2019. On the 21st of November, Airbus appointed Michael Skullhorn, CU for BSH Home Appliances GmbH, to succeed Tom Williams as Chief Operating Officer, CU for Airbus Commercial Aircraft from the 1st of February 2019 and Dominic Azem, CFO of Infineon Technologies, to succeed Harold Wilhelm as Chief Financial Officer from the 10th of April, 2019. On the 20th of December, 2018, Le Monde newspaper reported the US Department of Justice had opened a corruption investigation, which could result in fines of up to 4 to 5 billion euros. In February, 2019, Airbus launched the One Atlas platform, a geospatial tool that applies artificial intelligence to satellite images and extracts insights for customers. Competition with Boeing, edit. Main article, competition between Airbus and Boeing. Airbus is in tight competition with Boeing every year for aircraft orders although Airbus has secured over 50% of aircraft orders in the decade since 2003. Airbus won a greater share of orders in 2003 and 2004. In 2005, Airbus achieved 1,111, 1,055 net orders, compared to 1,029 net of 1002 for the same year at rival Boeing however Boeing won 55 percent of 2005 orders proportioned by value and in the following year Boeing won more orders by both measures Airbus in 2006 achieved its second best year ever in its entire 35 year history in terms of the number of orders it received 824 second only to the previous year 
Airbus plans to increase production of the 320 airliners to reach 40 per month by 2012, at a time when Boeing is increasing monthly 737 production from 31.5 to 35 per month. Regarding operational aircraft, there were 7,264 Airbus aircraft operational at April 2013. Although Airbus secured over 50% of aircraft orders in the decade since 2003, the number of Boeing aircraft still in operation at April 2013 still exceeded Airbus by 21% because Airbus made a late entry into the market, 1972 versus 1958 for Boeing. This lead is diminishing as older aircraft are progressively retired. Though both manufacturers have a broad product range in various segments from single aisle to wide body, their aircraft do not always compete head to head. Instead they respond with models slightly smaller or bigger than the other in order to plug any holes in demand and achieve a better edge. The A380, for example, is designed to be larger than the 747. The A350XWB competes with the high end of the 787 and the low end of the 777. The A320 is bigger than the 737 to 700 but smaller than the 737 to 800. The A321 is bigger than the 737 to 900 but smaller than the previous 757 to 200. Airlines see this as a benefit since they get a more complete product range, from 100 seats to 500 seats, than if both companies offered identical aircraft. In recent years the Boeing 777 has outsold its Airbus counterparts, which include the A340 family as well as the A330-300. The smaller A330-200 competes with the 767, outselling its Boeing counterpart in recent years. The A380 is anticipated to further reduce sales of the Boeing 747, gaining Airbus a share of the market in very large aircraft, though frequent delays in the A380 program have caused several customers to consider the refreshed 7478. Airbus has also proposed the A350XWB to compete with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, after being under great pressure from airlines to produce a competing model. The A320 Neo S primary competitor is Boeing 737 MAX which was grounded in March 2019 after two fatal accidents. Historical Emblems, Edit Emblems of Airbus Industry GIE, 1972-2000, and Airbus SAS, 2001-2016, until the latter on the 1st of January, 2017 merged with its parent company, Airbus Group SE. Emblems of the European Aeronautic Defence and Space Company NV, 2000-2014, Airbus Group NV. 2014-2015, and Airbus Group SE, 2015-2017. 2014-2017. See also, edit. One competition between Airbus and Boeing. Two Concorde aircraft histories. Three history of aviation. One aviation in the digital age.